uh, purpose for doing this and being here is to help you um, become strong disciples of Jesus. Not just church members. Amen. Disciples. Amen. Okay? Now, I want you to go to, uh, we're going to start with Luke chapter 9. And as you're turning there or as you're looking there, I want to talk to you this morning about recognizing spiritual attacks and demonic influences. Recognizing spiritual attacks and demonic influences. And, you know, I want to say that because, well, I don't say it for a lot of reasons, but a lot of times we, we, we don't recognize that there's an enemy. And Jesus spoke a lot about, Jesus spoke a lot about, Jesus did what? Spoke a lot about demons and he dealt a lot up with demons. He, he, he dealt with them all the time. He cast a lot of them out. Well, everyone he ran into, he cast out. But he talked about it. And it seems like the modern church doesn't really deal with that and talk about that. And so what happens is we end up dealing with symptoms and not the root. Yeah, if I had a big pot up here, a big plant, and uh, the, green, the, the green was, you know, oh, wow, that's a pretty plant. Well, um, the plant, what we see is, the, is, I would consider, the symptoms of something. And we see it, and we deal with it, we clip it, we spray it, and, you know, put the shiny stuff on it, and that's good. But, but the root is, is under the dirt, and the root is what's causing and sustaining or causing, producing that, that plant. And so... What happens is, in our lives, a lot of what goes on in our lives, we deal with symptoms and not with the root. You following me? You know, I used the example this morning about, you know, it seems like everybody knows somebody that's on drugs or was on drugs or, or out of control in their life. And a lot of times we say, well, you know, in the case of a drug person, man, this dude, he, he's irresponsible, can't hold a job, and you can't let him come to your house because he'll steal everything that's not nailed down. And, and we're like, man, he's got a serious problem. And he does. But, but, but all of that stuff, and it's a reality, all he's doing all of that stuff, but the reality of it is, that's a symptom. There's something beyond the symptom that's causing him to do that. There's, there's a root that's causing him to behave like that. And so it is with us, a lot of us. I'm going to say some things today may, may be a little personal, but it's okay. Because we all deal with things. We all deal with things that, you know, even out of character, out of, out of uh, whatever. But it's not, it's not the real us, but it's an influence. And Jesus dealt with it. So I want to deal with it, Okay. Now, in, in Luke chapter 1, I want to remind you about the authority he gave me, and then we're going to get right into it. Go to 9-1. Uh, he says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power. And what else? Power. Over how many demons? All. All demons. And to cure, and to cure diseases. Okay, now go to Matthew chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he says, And when he called the twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out. To do what to them? Cast them out. Yeah, and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Now, we're in this area now about authority. Last week, I think I preached, I think it was Wednesday, we said, with authority comes responsibility. Now, we started talking about the year of restoration, and I never even thought I was going to get over into this area. But if you were here last week, if you weren't here last week, I talked about how to, how to pray and how to stand for, for your loved one that's bound up, that's unsaved, that's, that's out of their mind. There's a, we have responsibility with all this authority on how to help them navigate their way out of whatever bondage, whatever place they're in. And we talked about it. That was really good. If you weren't here, you really need to get that. Because we have a responsibility. Now, I want to talk today, though, about, well, we're going to help other people, but about, this is about us. Every demon, say demon. Yeah. Now, you're not afraid, right? Can I talk to you? Because they're not all in uh, third world countries. There's someone here right now. I heard the preacher say one time, the folks say, Pastor, we're going to bind the devil. Ain't no devil getting in here today. He said, well, I guess ain't nobody coming in here then. Oh, that's good, Pastor. 
Because they come in here with us. <laughs> Demons have two, two, primary, two primary objectives. A, to keep you from walking with God. To keep you from accepting Jesus. To keep you from becoming a disciple of Jesus. That's their first objective. The second one. And this is when I'm primary because I'm, I'm in a church. Most of y'all here say. The second one is to keep you from being effective. You don't mind you wearing a t-shirt. I had my t-shirt on yesterday. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. You got that one? You got an email from who? From the website? Okay, I don't know. I got Mike McCray sent it to me. No Jesus, no peace. I got the t-shirt. But he wants to keep you from being effective. He don't mind you going to church. He don't mind you praising like you lost your mind. He doesn't want you effective. He doesn't want you reflecting the power of God, the love of God. He doesn't want your life counting. He doesn't want your life making a difference. He don't mind you going to church and, 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 and wearing the cross. But he doesn't want you effective. And, and he works overtime, overtime to minimize and to negate all the power we're talking about. So I'm talking primarily to that bunch. Because, because you and I are in a spiritual battle 24-7. 24-7, not 4, 24-7. No, no, we're in a spiritual battle. And, and sometimes we don't realize we're in a spiritual battle. And that's part of the deception. Deception is the most, it's at the top of his list of tricks that he uses for the believer. Amen. Paul talked about it in 1 Timothy chapter 4. He said in the latter time, deception, the deception of the enemy is going to be prevalent. So there's a lot of people, they love Jesus, they, 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 they want Jesus, but they're being deceived into understanding, A, you can do something about a lot of stuff, yeah. and B, if I can just keep them ineffective. I don't want them to know about their authority. If I can keep that little short preacher quiet, that ain't going to never happen. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to never happen. I ain't going to never water down and just give you some self-improvement stuff. I believe in self-improvement. But I ain't going to know. This, this, see, a lot of times people want, to, want behavior modification. That ain't this. This is life transformation. Not behavior modification. Behavior modification means you act a certain way in certain places. Some of you are already doing that. <laughs> okay, be nice. I said I'm gonna be nice, right? Okay. So, uh, so okay. So listen, I, I wrote down a lot of stuff. I want to make sure I get to it. Oftentimes, people assume that negative things that they're dealing with is just natural. They think that I'm only dealing with something natural. And if he can keep you thinking that, your response will be natural responses instead of getting to the root. Yeah, it is. Okay, Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I want you to be real quiet. <laughs> no, you can get loud if you want to. I'm going to be loud. Now, now, this is familiar scripture. Dial in. And then at the, and then at the end of this, I want to give you symptoms and then things for you to, that you'll know that you're under attack. I'm going to give you symptoms of it. You better help somebody else. But then you'll be able to look and say, oh, shit, I thought someone was wrong with me. No, like, ain't nothing wrong with you. You're just under attack. You're just under attack. And that's what the devil does. He brings us under what? Attack. And I'm going to show you. This is going to be good. Just stay with me, okay? Keep, this, keep your wig on tight. <laughs> Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brother, be strong where? In the Lord. And in the power of what? His might. Okay, okay, just right there. Whose power are we being strong in? The Lord. So This power that he's given us is a gift. The authority he's given us is a gift from God. It's not mine. I can't earn it. It's not, it's, I can't work it up. It's a gift from God. So he's telling me right up front, 
Be strong in the Lord. That's how we walk in victory. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Amen. Stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle. Uh-oh. For we do not wrestle against who? But against principalities. Powers. Rulers of the My God. Rulers of the darkness. Of this age. Against spiritual hosts. Of wickedness in heavenly places. People are not our problem. If you're mad at anybody in here today, get over it. <laughs> there is, there's demonic activity and angelic activity 24-7. As a believer, you are automatically enrolled in warfare. You are automatically enrolled in warfare. I know I, I, I've heard people say, well, shoot, man, Pastor, I wasn't I wouldn't experiencing any of this crap till I became a Christian. I said, I know. Okay. What do you want me to say? <laughs> well, I need to know some answers. Oh, that's simple. You weren't experiencing anything because you was walking with the devil. Y'all going in the same direction. That's right. You can't bump into him if y'all rolling together. <laughs> but when you decide, no, really, and 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 even that though. But he he, okay, I, I'm gonna get ahead of myself. But but even with that, okay, I'm not gonna say that. But you're enrolled in warfare now. People, that person on the job is not your enemy. Your neighbor is not your enemy. The person you don't like, if they if it wasn't for them, hush all of that. That's not your enemy. That's not your problem. Now God, not God, the devil uses people to channel. But, but what you have to do is you have to go behind the channel and, and you have to deal with that or you'll, cause he'll just go from channel to channel. I'm going to move to Florida. I won't have to deal with all this. No, he got channels in Florida. That's right. yeah. You got to deal with him. Amen. Well, what am I supposed to do with the people? Let them go. Let them go? Well, not let them go. Okay, I'm a fit. Uh, you okay? Yeah, no. <laughs> people are not your problem. Now, if people mess with you and they break the law, put their hands on you, there are people that will steal from you, you prosecute them jokers. <laughs> yeah, I ain't saying, well, that's, that's just the devil. Let it go. No, no. <laughs> no, no. You take care of the devil and him. That's what you do. That's how you do that. No, no, I say that because, because sometimes we're like, well, you know the Bible said, turn the cheek. Well, yeah, you turn the cheek, all right. <laughs> okay, let me stop. But, you know, people that break the law, people that, that's why we have laws. And you got to stop them. Why? Because if you just let them go, they'll do that to somebody else. That's not the will of God. The Bible said all law, all authority is given of God. Law enforcement is given by God to keep, for those who are keeping the law, to keep them safe. Amen. So if somebody doing you wrong, blatantly robbing, stealing, hurting you, abusing you, putting their hands on you, they need to, they need to, yeah. They need, they need, they need to be, they need some correction. And however you figure that out. But that's not what I'm talking about. Every negative thing in your life and in my life, there's an enemy that inspired it, that influenced it, everything. And Jesus talked about, he, you know, he used the term cast out. Well, it's not like, oh, come out and then, no, you cast him out of that situation. You recognize who inspired it. You recognize who instigated it. You recognize who influenced it. And you attack him. Now, what does it say last? 
I said, uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. Verse 11. I want to, no, 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 don't, don't go there. I want you to go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. So there's spiritual force working against you all the time. How often? All the time. They're working against you all the time. If you didn't feel like coming in here today, it was working against you. I'm going to give you some symptoms. Some of you are going to be like, oh, my God. So we're not going to blame people, right? Okay, that wasn't enough participation. We're not going to blame people, right? Okay, because people are not a problem. Okay, now, I want you to go to, uh, what did I ask you to go? First Peter chapter 5. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, who? The devil. Walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, again, I know I went over these before, but I wanted to build this before I go to the next place. Because behind the scenes, beneath the surface, there's something far more taking place than just circumstances. Now, uh, okay, let's do it. Go to Luke chapter 11. Whew. Now, Jesus said something about the way evil spirits work. I want to talk to you about it. Jesus said they work in gangs. Gangs. Listen to this real good. They work in gangs. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Now, in Luke chapter 11, <laughs> this, one of the reasons, you know, uh, uh, Deb and I, we, 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 we quit arguing. We don't remember last time we had an argument. We don't remember the last time there was strife in our house. We don't remember. That's how long it's been. And we don't even remember. I try to get mad at her sometimes. <laughs> and she just give me that look. She, just, she doesn't say nothing. She just look. But what I'm about to show you is the reason why I decided this stuff, strife, division, me got to be right, why I abandoned all of that kind of thinking. And it has impacted my children, my grandchildren. It's impacted everything. Look at this, Luke chapter 11, verse 24. He said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through what? Dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. Now, what is he, what's he calling his house? The man. He said, when he goes out of a man, he, the spirit talking about, I'll go back to my house. He, you don't own, he thinks he owns you. And when he keep my spot there, John. And when he says house, he's talking about your whole family. He's talking about your whole family. He's not just talking about you know your your structure, the brick and mortar. He's talking about everything with your name on it, everything with your DNA on it, whether they're in your house or whether they're cross country where you had them. He's talking about his house. There's some things. Listen. There's some things that can, you know, oh, there's some things that I could pass on to my children without even raising them. <laughs> Here's what I mean. Well, you know, you know what I mean. I can be like dropping seeds everywhere. I don't even know, I don't even know where they're all at. And they can still be impacted because that's my house. He thinks it's his house. But that's not what I want to talk about. Listen to this. He said, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it what? Swept and what? Put in order. Verse 26. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits. I told you, they're game. More wicked than himself. 
And they in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is what? Worse, Worse than the first. So what Jesus is teaching us, and here, here's the point, here's the major point today. How many of y'all have watched them, them, them police shows, the, like when the SWAT team comes? And the, you got the guys with the big old thing, and they ram, they knock the door down, knock the wall down, knock on everything. And, and about two of them, and they go, poof, poof. And then you got the other guy, little minion with the little helmet on. You know, about 25 of them. There's only one guy in there, but about 25 of them there. You know I remember? <laughs> okay. That's the way demons are. There's a door opener. That's what Jesus is teaching. He said, there's a door opener. See, me getting angry, it ain't just about me being angry. It's about me getting angry and opening the door for all the mother women. <laughs> strife. Open, that's what Jesus, James said in James chapter 3. He said, where well, there's envy and strife, there's what else? Confusion and what else? Every evil work. That's all the little. Jesus said, you're not just dealing with what you see. You got one, he, he busted the, he, he, and there's a whole line of them. I ain't going to. I'm not going to open the door to a bunch of minions just so I can be right. I'm not done. Go to Mark chapter 5. This is a, we got to know how they operate, y'all. Look at Mark chapter 5. This is when Jesus met the, uh, the demon-possessed man. Y'all know the story. Mark 5, 8. He said to the man, to the demon, come out of the man, unclean spirit. So that's a demon. Look at verse 9. Then he asked him, Jesus said, what's your name? And he answered, saying, what did he say? Amen. No, that's not what he said. He said, my name. Why did he say my name? Because I'm the door opener. He said, my name is Legion. I'm Big L. Now, all these other fellas behind me, and look at what he said. He said, my name is Legion, for we are what? Man. That's them all the mother cats behind. I'm Legion, I'm the door opener. See, what you think, this is what he's saying. Yeah. What you think, you think you're just dealing with me. You ain't just dealing with me. I got a whole army ready to take you down. As soon as you open the door, I'm going to go to all the bedrooms, I'm going to go to all the, all the, you open the door, I'm in there. Thank you. Me being angry, it's not just about me. That's just the door opener. Me getting in strife is just the door opener. <sighs> Y'all remember Judas? Now, Judas, I didn't tell it in first, so I just thought about it. Well, I told this. I didn't tell all of it. You know, Judas was a thief, right? And, and he was stealing from Jesus the whole time. Jesus must have had a grip for Judas to be stealing and him, Jesus not say nothing about it. He knew about it. He just didn't say nothing. He would give him his faith. Well, one day, Jesus, remember Judas got all upset because he said, you should have put this money. This woman gave you all this money. I can't believe she gave all it to the church. <laughs> Them demons still alive. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, I ain't going to say nothing about that. <laughs> but, but, he, but he said, Jesus said, so he said, you could have gave it to the poor. And Jesus checked him. You remember that? Jesus said, leave this woman alone. And Judas was like some of us. Nobody likes to be corrected publicly. But sometimes you got to correct publicly when folk clown publicly. <laughs> That's what I learned. And so, and so, so I can imagine Jesus, Judas was like this. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't just clown me in front of everybody. He could have done this in the, in the back room. Okay. And you know what happened? He got offended. Offense, being offended is another door opener. He got offended. And so he probably was plotting. Okay, I got something for Jay. I got something for him. He ain't going to climb me no more. But what happened was that the fence opened the door. And so now he became accessory to a murder. You remember that? But that's not even the end of it. See, y'all, y'all, y'all get the full. I didn't get it to the first group. What happened to Judas? 
He hung himself. He went from stealing. He was just trying to get enough money to pay off his motorcycle, man. How many of y'all, how many of y'all employ, you, you, you own a business or somebody, and people, you gave an opportunity to make a living, stole from you. I'm going to see your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. Yeah. I've had it happen. Just, how can you, how you going to steal from me? And I was, mad, I was hotter than fish grease. <laughs> That's pretty hot, huh? <laughs> I really, I mean, I had, I had, it was all I could do to stay safe. It was all I could do. No, I just, I mean, because I'm, how you, man, I'm going on the line. You don't even know. Sometimes I don't even take a check. So you can be paid. And you're going to steal from me? Anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. So, you okay, babe? I saw you. <laughs> Pull your Shonda. A lot of time I'm preaching, I'm preaching to me. Calm down. It ain't the people, friendly. <laughs> it ain't the people. I got the litters, man. Anyway, started stealing, started conspiring. Became a sexual murder, and ultimately the devil wanted to destroy him. That's what happened. He took his life. But it started with just dealing a few coins. That's what I'm trying to tell you. See, what you may think is just this. I'm just, just this. No, that's an open door. Amen. Y'all remember uh, this dude named David? Second Samuel? Old girl was out bathing. They call her Bath Sheba. <laughs> that was her name. And you know why she was out bathing? Because David the king was supposed to be at work. You, don't, you ain't supposed to be waking up in the middle of the day. You're supposed to be working. Well, he was the king. The king. And so he, and so he, he looked up over there. And, uh, you know, he, I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> and, he, and he tried to walk away, and he went, is that what I think it is? <laughs> and then he did what the average brother would do. Good Lord. Y'all ain't right. Y'all ain't right. Come on, brother. Y'all know. So he, he like, you know, I ain't got no business out here. This ain't even right. But then he said, uh, hey, hey, Raheem, why don't you run over there and see if she want a cup of coffee? You know, it's always innocent. C come on, let's meet down the thing and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, that is it. You've been there to the coffee. You had the invitation for the coffee, huh? Okay, all right, all right, all right. And so anyway, so, so, so Raheem went over there and said, hey, you know, the king, the king, the king want to see you, you want to have a cup of coffee. She said, the king? You mean my husband's boss? Yeah, so she probably thinking, oh, okay, maybe we're going to get some increase up in here, you know, maybe, maybe she about to promote my brother. And so anyway, so she went to get coffee. Well, you know, the story, they ended up having an affair and, um, uh, Probably one just one time, and then she ended up getting pregnant. Now all he did was just wake it up. <sighs> Started with looking. I know, right? I sure want to. It just started with looking. See, <laughs> I gotta preach. Started with looking. So now he invites her over. See, every one of us in here knows our weakness. But we got to stop lying to ourselves. 
about what our weaknesses are. And so she came over and they had an affair. And now the dude, she's pregnant. Uriah, David's captain, one of his captains, working for him, he like, David's like, oh my God. So she, he, he went to Uriah and, and we said, right, come on home. Come on home, get, get, get you some, you know, get, come on down and get down with your wife. Come on, you've been out there a long time. Come on home. He said, I can't do that, man. My integrity won't let me leave my men here fighting. I'm supposed to be fighting. I think you're supposed to be down here too, but anyway. <laughs> you know, but you the boss, I ain't going to say nothing. And so he, he wouldn't come. So David went from just looking to having an affair to being a baby daddy to now conjuring up a scheme to make it look like Uriah came home on leave and she got pregnant, but he wasn't going for her. So now he said, man, shoot, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, all of my, cause she, getting, she getting bigger, you know, and Uriah was like, baby, what's up? Ah, all them carbs. <laughs> and so, <laughs> y'all ain't right. And so, now watch this now. So, I'm talking about how this works. See, the, the left of the eye, everybody know what they can't be looking at. Yeah. Or listening to. Yeah. Or having coffee with. Yeah. So now, David got a scheme to clear this up. So, so now, he come up with a scheme to get the boy killed. So she, he put him up front, front line, and he got shot and killed. So now he went from lust to adultery to murder now. The king. He lost his integrity as a leader. He was a great king for a while, but he lost all of his integrity. And so now, now, now he's having a man killed. Because that demon of lust got in there. That lust opened the door. Teach. Hey guys, come on in. I hear David at the funeral, oh, getting a little two minutes. Yeah, he was a great guy. I met him. We were playing racquetball down at the base, <laughs> and I knew he had potential. And he, you know, he fronting. And so after the funeral. After the funeral, he, 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 you know, none of him and Bathsheba going home until the man of God showed up. Nathan said, David, um, he gave him a parable. What would you do? <laughs> Y'all know the story? Okay. And David said, oh, man, shoot, if it was me, oh, man, I, I, you know, we, we, we deal with that. He said, David, I'm talking about you. You're the man. I know, man. And watch it. And David, David, read the story about all of David's children, his son. They went through hell. Solomon came out of that one. That was Solomon, right? Out of Bathsheba. And, and he talked about that. But, but they went through hell. All because, what, what was the door opener? Lust. Lust. Just looking. That second look always gets you. <laughs> you you got to move on after the first one. And we, 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 we can have one. <laughs> but that second one, but here's what I'm telling you. Okay, I'll come to him. Because you look at me like, don't, 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 not today, Pastor. <laughs> I'll just mess with you. Sometimes it's just a look, man. Now, I can sit here and tell you, because I haven't been saved all my life. I could tell y'all a lot of stories, but you don't want to hear them. No. You just know them. <laughs> All of us have, have some things we regret, but, but my point is how demons work. Amen. It's not just, he's not just after me. He's after her, after him, yeah. after him, after him. He's at, 
after y'all. You think, it's, oh, I'm just getting angry. No, that's the door open. They work in gangs. We are many. And so Jesus, that's why Jesus was so, he was ruthless with them demons. Because he understood, this is not just about the circumstance and the situation right here. This is about how deep I can go, how far I can go into the house. You know, um, I remember, what Cammy? I saw Cammy. What Cammy at? There you go. Way back there, Cammy. You remember, you remember I preached that sermon about uh, breaking on curses? And you told me how that thing just turned your, it just impacted your family. You know, she come out of the village with some crazy stuff happening. And, and she, she got that sermon or series or whatever. And it, but see, that stuff that happens, that just like you pass on the blood type, Just like you can pass on, well, okay, well, my son be part, I'm be part, my son be part. You can pass on some stuff you don't want your son to deal with. Amen. And that's why David said, or Solomon, who was said, I was born in, in sin and shaped in iniquity? David. He had them issues. So when we're dealing with people, when we're dealing with people, you got to understand, you know, how come, how come they, God, dog, can't you see? Can't you see you're destroying? No, they can't see. They can't see. You can see, but they can't see. And it's, 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 it's a demonic influence. That's some of us. I mean, all of us, all of us. I know you, you, you're looking good and all that, but, but you got some influence too. Amen. There's some things that we like, I know I, I, know I ain't supposed to be doing this. Amen. Now let me get to the symptoms and the, <laughs> oof, my thing turned off on me. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Yeah. Okay, give me about uh, 20 more minutes, okay? Now, whew, opening the door. Um, I'm not going to turn to it. I think I already mentioned. Yes, I will. No, turn to it. First Timothy chapter 4, please. Sometimes I, I, I just got to settle down. So we're going to we get ready to recognize some symptoms or to know Am I being attacked? Sometimes you're just being attacked. Yeah. I can tell you about attacks. I'm going to tell you about some of them. I mean, some of mine. But here's, 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 the, here's the big one. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. All kind of crazy teaching. Facebook, Live, Periscope, all of them. I got all these ministers out there now. <laughs> anyway, but uh, he said, now, now here, here's my belief based on the scripture. Spiritual deception is the biggest, um, it's the biggest enemy that we have to deal with in the times we're living in. Spiritual deception. Spiritual deception. He blinds the minds. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says he blinds the minds of those who don't believe. He blinds the mind. Spiritual deception. Thinking it's okay. It's not a problem. When it, it is a problem. It's, it's not a natural problem. It's a spiritual problem. Spiritual deception. Just, just give me some more, some more of those painkillers and then I can deal with this. You know, it's a spiritual problem. I'm going to go into my, uh, my litany of my list, actually. And uh, I'm going to list, I have lists of things here that kind of let us know if we're under attack or demonic <laughs> symptoms. You ready? Okay, y'all, I'm going to find all enthusiastic now. Y'all was all enthusiastic a minute ago. <laughs> Okay, first thing I want to talk about is um, <clears throat> um, psychological kind of disorders, split personalities, multiple personalities, paranoia, somebody's out to get me, <laughs> you know, all this, all this surveillance now, the NSA, you know, they probably are listening. I don't know what they be listening for, but they listening. But the paranoia, split personality, that, that's demonic. That's a, that's a demonic trait. Um, 
it's, 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 it's an attack and it's a spirit. Well, I don't know anybody like that. Well, if you, if you act a certain way around the kingdom of God and then a certain way around the world, that's a split personality. I thought you would say, well, I'm saved over there. That's a split personality. That's a demonic trait. And that's a deception. It's like, okay, no, no, that's just church stuff, Pastor. That's just church stuff. This is the real world over here. See, that's your problem. The, 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 you, you, you don't separate. God doesn't separate, but you separate the natural from the spiritual, and you're dealing with spiritual stuff in a natural way. Okay, watch this. Um, um, torment. The Bible says in Luke 6, 6 that a woman was tormented with the spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Evil spirits look to torment people mentally, physically. I mean, 18 years, Jesus healed the lady but said that the devil had tormented her and made her that way. So it wasn't a physical medical issue. It was a spiritual issue that he cast that devil off. So it, it's clear some things that we think are just Physical issues are demonic. Hmm. Lack of spiritual passion. He wants to steal, and he will. He'll steal my joy, steal my tenacity. I used to be on fire for the things, but now my tenacity. That's an attack. Okay. <coughs> I think all my support coming from right about here now. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's an attack. You used to, the word was a priority to you. You praying, you had a prayer life. Now, it's, it's, it's almost non-existent. I pray at church, I pray over the food. Lord bless my food. And, and so that tenacity, goes, that's an attack. Especially when you know better or you used to be, that's an attack. Amen. That's not you getting older in the Lord. No, that's an attack. Amen. No passion for God like you used That's an attack. Well, what's wrong with me? Something's just wrong. No, you're being attacked. Yeah. I don't want to go to church. I go to church once a month. That's it. You attacked. Wow. Settle down, Pastor. <laughs> no, it's the truth. I'm going to ask you how many of y'all didn't feel like coming today. You were attacked, but you moved past it. Yeah. I mean, it happens all the time. Sometimes I get up here and ain't, I should be home in the bed. But I have a, I have a covenant with God. Glory to God. Amen. So prayer life seems non-existent anymore. It's a, I, don't, I don't need to do all of that. <clears throat> Oppression. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 that Jesus went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. <laughs> in Isaiah 61, he said, I'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of what? The spirit of heaviness. The demonic. The spirit of heaviness. It's a demonic thing. It's the devil who wants to oppress you and keep you from opening your mouth to praise God. Amen. That's demonic. <laughs> it's the spirit of it's, it's the spirit of heaven. It's demonic to to have no joy mm -hmm. in God. It's the money. It's like a cloud. Sometimes I tell them this morning, and, and you know, I don't say anything, but sometimes I can see there's a cloud over people. Some people. There's a cloud over you. I don't care what. I don't care what. They just sit there like, I'm, I'm, I'm spitting out some of my best stuff. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm not. I'll be like, you know that's funny. That's funny right there. You need <laughs> And they sit there, don't pray the worship. <laughs> it's demonic. You say what you want to say. If the devil can keep your mouth shut. Now, we just had an awesome prayer, both, both services. Awesome. And, and, and if he can keep your mouth shut or criticizing what's going on, you are under attack. You have just yielded to the devil. And that's a door opener. The spirit of heaven is, will make you, will, will keep you discouraged, 
keep you despondent. It will, it will shut down your enthusiasm. It will keep you in a place of not even trying. Yeah. It can never get better. I don't think I can ever go beyond the spirit of happiness. Somebody's after me. They don't like me. They just, they just, you know, they just. That's a demonic attack. Amen. No matter, no matter what's going on, nothing good enough for you. You find something, hit somebody, hit somebody showing affection and love towards you, but nothing good enough for you. That's demonic. It's all about me. It's all about me. That's demonic. Amen. How much they got to get? They need to give some more. That's demonic. Amen. All right. Overwhelmed. Hopeless. Discouraged. Yeah. Mental distress. Anxiety. Fear. Anger. Depression. All of that. All of that. Comes from the enemy. That's that's the enemy. That's the enemy. It's demonic. He wants to take you out. Wow. Thank you, Lord. How y'all doing? Okay. Everybody's against me. They don't like me. Symptom and sign. These are things people either say or you're saying, and it's it's an attack. It's demonic. Nobody here like me. Have you talked to everyone? <laughs> Have you interviewed everyone? Okay, couple more. I'm done. Okay. Uh, Lack of peace. The enemy bombards your mind with thoughts and suggestions to rob you of your peace. Your mind, you're irritated, you're exhausted. He creates a, a mental fatigue. And, and I was telling this morning, a friend of mine, Pat Bailey, she, she goes to the nation and ministers all the time. And she said, friendly, sometimes you got to watch out that you don't get compassion fatigue. You're helping everybody, and that compassion fatigue can set in. And mental fatigue is, is most harmful when you've been in a spiritual battle for a long time. I don't know, man, shoot. And, and you, you, you're not giving up. Well, I'm going to deal with that in a minute. But, but, but you just you become bad. Even in the military and the natural, they, they, they send people to go get R&R because &R you can get battle fatigue. Still doing your job, but you're not always all there. The enemy loves to bring fatigue. You're so tired. You just slept eight hours. I know, but I'm tired. That's an attack. I don't even want to think. I don't just veg out. I want to binge on TV. Use up all your data. <laughs> <laughs> Everything exhausts you. You're, you're irritated. You're exhausted. And, and here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's where that strong urge to quit comes in. Why am I even doing this Christian thing? You know what? You know what? You know what? This weekend, you know what I'm going to do this weekend? This week, this weekend, you know what? I'm gonna do me. <laughs> is that what they do? Is that what they say? Okay, oh, that's what you do. <laughs> no, you can get so fatigued. You know, I'm gonna do me. You know, you put, you should go to church. You know, you should be praying for your pastor. <laughs> I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't praying for nobody. I ain't praying for nobody. I'm just going to do mental fatigue. And, and listen, I'm believers. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about believers. You can get so mentally fatigued, 
It's an attack of the enemy, but he stuff you know you ought to be doing. He's like, I, I don't even care. Right, right now, I don't even care. And there's no, re there's no resistance there. And it's, it's a, he bump I told you what Diabolos means. Well, that was a couple weeks ago. That, that's not, that's, that's, the devil is his job title. It's not his name. And it means to assault and to attack and attack and to keep attacking until he penetrates your belief system. And penetrate with a fiery dart to take you off of course, off course. That's why some people, you know, you 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 used to walk with God, you was all of that, and now now you you looked. And now you way over here. Amen. And so so these other other minions came in yes, and now you're tired. Your creativity's gone. How come I can't even I used to be it's gone. What what happened? Mental fatigue, exhaustion? And you get so disappointed you don't even want to try anymore. That's an attack. I don't even want to, I don't want to hear, I like Pastor, but I don't want to hear no word today. I don't want to hear no word. Turn on the MBT, the MTV, MTV. That's what, that's what I'm feeling today, okay? I ain't feeling no praise the Lord. It's an attack. Okay, I got a couple more. Y'all following me? Yes. Attack. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just an attack. You're under attack. The strong urge to quit your assignment. This happens to preachers a lot. But those people, there are people who say, you know, I'll, I'll be, you know, I check them. But anyway, they say, well, I'm called to the ministry. Okay. Talk to me about five, ten years from now. Let's see if you're still cold. Amen. Well, no, because the urge to quit. He attacks stuff, your assignment that was so dear to you. He attacks it to convince you. <laughs> Give it up. How many people you know, things were so dear to them, even the things of God were so dear to them, and the urge to quit was so strong, they laid their assignment down. They abandoned their assignment. It doesn't just happen to preachers, though. Amen. It happens to families. It happens to fathers. Amen. It happens to mothers. I talked to a guy the other day. He said, man, my wife, she just left. I said, why'd she leave? I don't know. I said, where's she at? <laughs> well, she, she out in Wasilla with this dude. I said, well, go get her. Yeah. <laughs> you know where she is, right? Yeah. Go get her. Beat the dude up and bring her back home. <laughs> what? That's not good? Okay. <laughs> Take that off the tape. We won't put that online. No, no, that's, but the urge to quit. Don't you quit on your family. Don't you, listen, listen, don't quit on yourself. Can I say something? God, dog. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God has plans for you. And they're what? I don't care, God, dog, I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care what last year has been. Now, this is year of restoration, but last year ain't no restoration. This is year of destruction, and, 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 and I got a preservation. But anyway, I don't care what you're going through right now. God's plan for you has not changed. Yeah. God's plan for you is still what? Yeah. Oh, you didn't say it like you meant I said God's plan for you is still what? Yeah. And so don't you let the urge to quit or the urge to give up or to abandon your assignment. You know God has his hand on you. Yeah. Don't you give up. You under attack. Quit. Listen, they don't care about you. They can care less about I mean, that's what the enemy will tell you. Don't nobody care about you. Look at you. They all talking about you. Uh, have you talked to everybody about that? That's how, that's how he operates. Yeah. That's good, Pastor. Thank you. 
Then there's Drew. So during attack, you become overwhelmed, give up, abandon. You don't need to put, you put all the time in, you don't need to put all the effort in now. Well, what you gonna do? There's only one way to do something. Either all in or not in. Amen. A person under attack finds himself deeply questioning their Christian walk. You know, I, you know, I, I was, I, was, I, you know, I know, I know, I know, you know, the the Bible says this, but I don't really think it really means all that. And so, God sends people in your life; He's given them to you, but you avoid them because they're going to give you this, and the enemy is going to make sure there's agents to support. Your weakness. He doesn't attack you when you're strong. Okay. All right. I'm almost done. He doesn't attack you when you're strong. Okay. Here's the last area. Bondage. Demons seek to place people in bondage. There's people in religious bondage. Been in church all their life, but really don't even know Jesus. But they know a bunch of religion. And, and that's good. That's not, not good. But he sleeps to enslave sins, addictions, destructive behaviors. And there's a strong pull, strong pull toward the negative cycles that you broke free from. And the folks know what I'm talking about, said. Yeah. See, I don't care what you broke out of. I don't care what you broke out of. Now, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how some stuff, like you, you know, you're going 10 years, 15 years, then all of a sudden here comes this strong urge. Like, what? What is that? What did I do? That's an attack. That's what that is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an attack. So, and yeah, we know what to do, and I'm sure you in just a minute, but, but, I'm talking about demonic, it's a strong urge to come back and you can't, you can't, you can't look. One thing I want you to leave here with is the door opener. He said, my name is Legion, but all them other cats, I don't know what their name is, but they're ready to come in and take possession. Don't open the door. Okay, one last thing. Um, what did I say? Bondage. Strong pull back toward negative cycles. Compulsion. Just irresistible urge. Irresistible. I mean irresistible. You can't resist it. It's the it's a irresistible urge to, to abuse people, to, uh, 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 take advantage of their kindness. Irresistible urge. Compulsion. Whether, you know, we always talk about, we always talk about, well, sexual perversion and all of that. Ir irresistible urges. See, you can, you can have a snicker compulsion. Amen. You got 15 <laughs> snickers under your bed. You got 20 of them in the console of your car. You got some at your desk at work. That's just as bad as alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> no, anything, compulsion is, is, is out of control. Out of control. So you talk, we talk about anger and all of that stuff, and that's all part of it. But compulsion, a compulsion is a demonic influence. <sighs> it's a demonic influence, and it's something that's got to be, you, you see, when you're dealing with people, a lot of times, well, have you had counseling? They don't need counseling. They don't need no more counseling. Amen. We're so quick to send people somewhere. No, come here. I'm going to read this to you, and this is what we're going to do. Now, do you believe, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to cast this out. And you're going to be free Amen. right now. Amen. That's how we do that. That's what we do. Now, now, if you were here last week, I told you we can't override someone's will, so we can get them free. But, but the, you know what that is? You know what that is? Yeah, that's as soon as you leave the one that got you free. The one talking about this is my house. 
This is my house. I'm back. I want, I want to be back in. I heard what Friendly said, but you're not with him now. You don't know how to do this. But we're going to teach you how to do that. So when he come knocking, you you like, what? All right, let me stop. Was that it? I need to bring up anything else? You think I'm done? No? Deb told me to keep preacher. No, she didn't. <laughs> the reason I'm teaching you this is because, again, a lot of times we just think things are happening and they're just on the surface. There's so much beneath. There's so much behind. And especially if it's ongoing, continuous. When you keep going from job to job to job to job. There's a, I'm not saying your, your work is something, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Amen. Something's wrong. You can't, you know, five marriages like you told the one lady. Something's wrong. Now, if you've been married five times, God, God can, can fix it. But you just got to know it, it wasn't, it's, it's something was going on there. Amen. And I think I'm, I'm kind of partial to some things because there's so much going on. And so much of this happened. But... I want to um, I want to pray. I want to pray, and I don't know how we're gonna. I'm trusting God. I'm not gonna ask you to come up here, but I'm praying that you got this, because this is more about what you using your authority and your power for you, your loved one. Man, shoot! I would call a family meeting and stuff that you know. If you open the door, let the kids know. Look, I open the door on this. Yeah, they can't seem to get free. It's the same thing every year, over and over. That's demonic. It's not. It's not self-discipline. That has something to do with it. But we got to break some stuff, and we have to be more conscious that I'm a believer. Amen. There's some clouds in here now. You just, you just, you just shroud in darkness, and you. There's two clouds. I see two clouds in here right now. I just see two. There may be more. I see two. And if you will take what we said today, and I'm about to pray. I have authority, but you have authority too. You can join mine. But I want to do two things. I want to pray a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I, I presented what you gave me, what you put in my heart to talk about. Didn't come out exactly like I thought it was going to, but I believe there was enough for you to work with in the lives of the people. And Father, I believe that the people you have here today and listening to me today are some that are, this was revelation. Like the one lady said this morning after the first service, that this was exactly that something had to give, something had to give. And that word you gave was just exactly what she needed, what she wanted. My prayer for everyone here, and I'm gonna say this, and I know it sounds a little hard, but it's, it's of myself too, I have to live by this. My prayer is that we all, you know, we can, <laughs> we can fool some people, we can look a certain way, And everything is not what it looks like. Everything on the outside is not what it is on the inside. Help us to be honest with ourselves. In the name of Jesus. Now my prayer is for those, I, I, see, I see some people with clouds. Now I'm going to speak to the cloud. Because you're feeling condemnation. You're feeling shame. You're feeling rejection. You're feeling um, abuse that you've been used. Promises have been made. And, and they walked out on the promise and on you. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to that right now. I, I break the stronghold of that over your life right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak liberty to you. I speak the all of gladness over your life in the name of Jesus. I speak the redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ over your life 
in the name of Jesus, that self-condemning spirit, I command you to take your hands off of those two people. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be whole. God, dog. Now, I just, I just got something else that uh, there's a man in here you, you were taken advantage of as a young man, as a boy, actually. And that shame thing is all over you. And, and you've covered it and covered it and you've acted out some things all because you thought that that's the way it should have been. I'm telling you, there's an evil spirit at work. I want everyone to stand, please. Now, if you don't believe in this kind of praying and talking, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and go. It's time for the church to be the church, y'all. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't want a bunch of folk coming in here and enjoying it and walking out bound up. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not going to have the young man come up or the man. I don't know if you're a man, young man, old man, but I know you're. Hallelujah. Sometimes, men, we don't talk about this kind of stuff because of, of the shame thing. Come on, I want you to do this with me. I want you to pray with me. Now, whoever you are, and it may be more than one, but whoever you are, I want you to receive now. In the name of Jesus, I break the influence of that foul, unclean spirit. I command you to seek and desist in your activity of trying to control and manipulate this man in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I command you to be gone. I command you to be gone. I speak healing to you. I speak wholeness to you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the shame. I rebuke the pain in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the healer of the broken heart. He came. I release the anointing now to bring healing to your life healing to your heart in the name of Jesus I strip that thing of the pain I strip the pain I strip the control and all those other ones that came in as a result of it I command you get out get out come out in the name of Jesus come out in the name of Jesus. Now, all over the building. All over the building. This is about you and God. Now, this is, if you trust me, as a man of God, just receive this. Father, in Jesus' name, every single one. You, you are the one who sent this word and healed us. I pray for everyone listening to me right now that will reach out and receive it. I pray in Jesus name this is your day of independence this is your day of liberty this is your day ought not these people be healed of their infirmity I command sickness as a result of demons to be broken over your life I rebuke this spirit of religion I rebuke every bondage I rebuke every torment I rebuke in the name of Jesus everything that's holding you back I rebuke every curse that when printed spoken over you presented to you I, all witchcraft, all occult activity. We break it off of you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, would you just thank God with me? Thank you, Lord. Something's happening. It may not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Off of every household, off of every child, every, off of every offspring in the name of Jesus. Now, spirit of heaviness, I command you. You will no longer control the people of God. It's over in the name of Jesus. Now, before we receive our offering, I want to pray for people. If you're here this morning, 